depersonalization of emotion has often been thought of as a prerequisite requisite for aesthetic pleasure bhattanayak pointed out that depersonalization of emotion can take place only if baser instincts or vital passions subdued and instead a sublimated satvik version of feelings is made to arise in the heart of spectators the psychology of the sankhya school of philosophy has found a place in this interpretation of rasa so you know the sankhya philosophy talks about the trigunatmaka jagat satya sattva raja and tamo gun these are the three gunas and here subjugation of the two and elevation of the sattva helps a bhavakatva in which rasa is experienced and therefore rasa lies in bhavakatva for lolat rasa is created there is utpatti of rasa in the anusandhan by the nata for shanku it lies in the vilakshana pratiti which is done in the anukaran by the nata for bhatnayak it is in bhavakatva through sadharani karan in the heart of the prekshak that there is rasa all right so right go ahead uh, we are putting an end to this session and we come back well come back at 130 after a good bhojana and bhojakatva <laughs>
and as you saw in the analysis this morning we went into a large number of questions who experiences rasa how now the position of lolit was that basically it is thai bhav only which gets transmuted converted into rasa and the position of anubhavas is like that of a catalyst he does not deny the sanyog he cannot deny because the sutra bharat sutra says samyogat ras nishpatti so he acknowledges the sanyog but his position is that the most important thing is transmutation of sthayi bhava and others are as i explained to you by an example from chemistry other things like vibhav like anubhav are catalysts they are there for the chemical reaction to take place but they do not become part of the chemical reaction so this is a drishtant which i have given like the drishtant from bharat muni we read yesterday you have the drishtant which i gave to you to explain then shankuk says it is impossible to feel anybody else's thai bhav and so you only infer the sthai bhava of the original character the nata the actor he infers recreates and through various other agencies vibhav and anubhav etc the prekshak also infers that there is a sthai bhava and hence his position is called the anumiti vada because for lolat there is the utpatti of rasa on the stage in the uh, mind in the activity of the nat and because there is utpatti it is called utpatti vada in the second case he says it is not possible how can you have the bhavas of somebody who is no longer alive whom you have never seen etc so you do an anukarana and it is in this great art of anukarana anukarana rupatvat that you achieve this vilakshana this rare reality which makes us wonder whether what we see is the real character or not the real character or somebody looking like the character or somebody sometimes looking like the character and not looking like the character ha huh? as he defines it by samyak pratiti mithya pratiti sanshay pratiti and sadrishya pratiti and he says that this is different from all these four which we experience in our normal life it is vilakshana pratiti and it is vilakshana pratiti of anukaran which is rasa so here rasa is in the form or anukaran the third position of bhatnayak brings us to the spectator this is all right something is happening on the stage but how does it come to me what happens to me is more important just because i am seeing should it happen to me tell me what happens to me shankuk uh, bhatnayak says that it is a, it is not just the nat karm where the rasa lies so he says that there is a different activity or vyapar which is going on and as i explained to you in the morning and we had this long long session 
दैट देर इज साधारणीकरण साधारणीकरण विच प्रोड्यूसेस भावकत्व एंड बिकॉज भावकत्व क्रिएट्स रसोद्रे रसोद्रेक बिकॉज इट ब्रिंग्स डाउन रज एंड तमस इन द स्पेक्टेटर बाई ब्रिंगिंग डाउन रजस एंड तमस इट क्रिएट्स अ ग्रेट स्टेट ऑफ ब्लिस कॉल्ड रसा बिकॉज ऑफ साधारणीकरण एंड भावकत्व एंड दैट स्टेट इज अकिन टू द स्टेट of bliss experienced by yogis hence it is called brahmananda sahodara and this experience this rasa is tasted and that tasting is called bhojakatva all right so we have summarized what we have done this morning and now we come to the acharya who has influenced the the subsequent commentators most heavily and these three acharyas opinion or purva paksha is known to us from abhinav gupt the position cited by a discussant of a person who whose position is being attacked reformed or demolished that position is called purva paksha this is the method of argument followed in ancient times that if i want to contradict somebody's philosophy first i quote his philosophy his mata his principles accurately without any distortion that is called purva paksha and then i attack the purva paksha that attack is called khandana and then i bring in my own presumptions establish them that establishing is called mandana so this in in mandana so this is in the uh, traditional system of argument this is the procedure followed so abhinav gupta has given us the purva paksha of these three great writers though abhinav's word has been regarded as the final achievement in rasa sutra interpretation it is obvious that he is drawing most of all on bhattanayak so he has become very famous abhinav gup more famous than anybody else but actually his position is based most on the siddhantas or the concepts propounded by bhattanaya so he only reforms bhattanaya a bit and establishes his position it's another matter that he becomes more famous than bhattanaya himself like pandit ravi shankar more famous than alauddin khan right but then the tradition comes actually from i mean this happens all the time his first presumption is ha ah, abhinav gupta accepts sadharani karan as the most cardinal of the changes that lead to rasa and i explained sadharani karan this morning to you in great great detail so i hope there are no uh, confusions about it as to what is sadharani karan and you will perhaps accept the fact that साधारणीकरण इज मोस्ट इसेंशियल टू एस्थेटिक एंजॉयमेंट इन द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी ब्रैडले एंड सर्टन अदर एस्थीट्स फ्रॉम इंग्लैंड दे ऑल्सो एक्सेप्टेड द आइडिया ऑफ साधारणीकरण और यूनिवर्सलाइजेशन ऑफ इमोशन बट ऑफकोर्स एज इट हैपन्स दैट मोस्ट ऑफ दीज थियरिस फ्रॉम द वेस्ट they never acknowledge what is there in the indian text they always say i didn't know i did it on my own the first presumption is that only a sensitively appreciative person can experience the joy of rasa so yesterday we talked about this that somebody who is not trained somebody who has had no exposure 
in this or previous lifetime or at least in this lifetime who has not been given a process of artistic appreciation can never experience rasa and yesterday we said that this has a basis in what bharat muni said that is bharat muni defines rasa as aswadyatvat that which is worthy of being tasted and this sense of what is worthy of being tasted is developed through some kind of a training right explaining sadharani karan abhinav gupta says that on seeing the deer being chased by dushyanta the spectator knows that the deer is afraid but there is no earthly reality the word abhinav gupta uses is vishesha roop abhavah i have translated this vishesh roop abhi vishesh roop abhavah as earthly reality in other words particularity there is an abhav of a vishesh roop it's not an occurrence that happens in the world because it's an occurrence on the stage so there is no earthly reality to which this fear can be related as the chaser is unreal and the chase is not real in space and time now i explained pretty much this thing to you when i talked about sadharani karan so i don't have to repeat it when abhinav gupta's words are repeated they pretty much mean what we have discussed therefore says abhinav the spectator is neither afraid himself nor does he think that the actor is really afraid nor does he think that the other actor or the dramatist persona is a friend or a foe personal reactions to a friend or a foe can detract the spectator from fully feeling the dramatically represented emotion this is what we went into in great detail in the morning when we talked about sadharani kara impersonalization of emotion and i explained to you how it actually operates such reactions being set aside the dramatically represented emotion looms large before the spectator's eyes and goes straight into the heart as bhayanak rasa to repeat in life emotions are not unalloyed there is always some other fear or trepidation or something which is threatening us even in our great moments of bliss we have some kind of a trepidation we have some fear or we have some thoughts of some vighna and vighna is something which human beings most abhor or most uh, worry about and that is the reason why we have vigneshwara of course vigneshwara also means one who creates vighnas so that he can test his bhaktas right if you can overcome the vighnas then you go ahead with this so vigneshwara is somebody who takes away and somebody who gives vignas also to test well to come back to this rasa the rasa of fear at this moment the atma or the self of the spectator is neither assertive nor subdued hmm what it means is that it is neither assertive in the sense that you don't want any personal interference in you don't say i don't like this kind of a uh, dushyant he is too aggressive for me or you don't say oh this dushyant is a sissy he is not manly enough you don't bring in your personal preferences you take as a sahridaya what is given to you on the stage 
and you do not look upon the character in any personal way as you all the time look upon worldly persons in terms of a worldly reaction no that is why you have a full tasting of this emotion in other words the self of the spectator is not reacting normally that is to say dramatic emotion is impersonal and health felt in a special way emotional states in daily life can never be felt in such a way as to be stripped of personal reactions there is another dimension added by abhinav to the analysis of rasutra so you would say well if abhinav gupta is saying all this then he is just repeating what shankok has uh, lolat uh, uh, bhatnayak has said fine sadharani karan he accepts he says it's right perfect but he adds lolat and shankok were content to anal were content to analyze what went on the stage bhatnayak widened the perspective by including the psychology of the spectator but abhinav goes further and suggests that the experience of a single spectator is influenced by the experience of the whole watching community now abhinav adds another perspective he says why do we want to go to the theater house and see theater there why can't we just read it or why can't we just see it in a private performance just a few of us we can take a better illustration from modern times why do you want to go to a movie house instead of just seeing in a home theater through a cd and abhinav gupta has an answer for abhinav sadharanikaran means the whole community is offered the same perceptive experience of pratiti in the vibhav anubhav vivichari the resultant sadharanikaran is so strong that all bonds of time and space are set aside for the sake of emergence of rasa there is a realization of a single unified experience for all the spectators so he adds that experiencing rasa on stage all by yourself is one thing but seeing it with various other people who are seeing the same performance there is a greater praharsha there is a greater experience and his words are ata eva sarva samajikanam ata eva therefore sarva samajikanam ek ghanataya ek ghanataya eva pratipatti hi sutaram rasa pariposhaya sutaram rasa pariposhaya for a great emergence of rasa for a higher emergence of rasa pariposhaya of rasa why why is this pratipatti or this occurrence of rasa happens because there is ek ghanata everybody is in that one circle so he brings another not just sadharani karan but he brings and adds another dimension watching with others and this is something you see all the time people like to go to theater and you must have seen though it is not of the same level but football play in football stadium the spectators go mad you know they they there is so much excitement there's such tremendous frenzy that people enjoy well of course that is a different level and a different kind of rasa but the illustration can be seen there in modern times all the spectators have the same deeply unified experience not only because they are moved by the same thing but also as abhinav postulates because every spectator is consciousness is colored by the same primordial desire 
now here we go into pure philosophical presumptions of abhinav gupta acharya huh? and what is this the same primordial desire if you remember lollat also said that you are able to have the sthayi bhava emerge because it is rooted in vasana so abhinav comes to the same thing same prime the seed of rati shok etc because there is a consonance among spectators in experiencing the primordial rasa so now abhinav gupt from the stage to the sadharani kar process into the prekshaka then not single but prekshaka as a whole he goes further into into something primordially psychological this constant experience is without any obstruction that there is a unity and a wonder his words are exactly this sarvesham anadi vasana chitrit chitrikrit chetasam vasana संवादादात सच अविघ्न संवित चमत्कार सो देर इज अ संवित चमत्कार ए चमत्कार टेक्स प्लेस वाय बिकॉज देर इज ए वासना संवाद देर इज वासना इन एवरीबडीज हार्ट द प्राइमोडियल वासना द एक्सपीरियंस and now in this given situation there is a consonance of that vasana so that particular bhav which is rooted in that vasana in that sthayi bhav which is rooted in that sthayi vasana is a vasana not only of this lifetime but anadi vasana creation right at the time of creation so he takes us to that point now that rasa is experience at that point therefore it may be said that bhava which is known as rasa when through not experience all obstructions such as personal likes and dislikes have been removed from it here vibhavas and anubhavas and sancharis are the obstruction removers so what has happened is that we have seen our we have really enjoyed our eternal bhava eternal vasana and all this act of watching is the obstruction remover let us go into the very words tatra विघ्ना विघ्न अपसारका विभाव प्रभृतय विभाव प्रभृतय विभाव अनुभाव एट्सेट्रा वॉट आर दे दे आर विघ्न अपसारक दे रिमूव ऑल द ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन फ्रॉम वॉट फ्रॉम दैट इटर्नल primordial vasana which is in our heart which is in our experience so in other words rasa becomes returning and remembering some kind of an emotion which is not just of this birth but of many many earlier births or many times or even if you don't believe in rebirth then of the primordial creation so abhinav gupta takes us to that point and therefore he says that what is rasa rasa is a bhava but what kind of bhava sarvatha 
रस रसनात्मक वीत विघ्न प्रतीत ग्राह्यो सर्वथा रसनात्मक वीत विघ्न प्रतीत ग्राह्यो इन विच देर इज एब्सोलूटली नो पॉसिबिलिटी और प्रतीति ऑफ विघ्न सो इन सिंपलर लैंग्वेज दी worldly situation gives us pleasure it gives us immense pleasure because we are able to enjoy that feeling without any vigna as it is impersonal through sadharani karan but now he goes beyond sadharani karan and he says that we enjoy that bhava what is that bhava that bhava which has always existed within us and art is only a medium of bringing us to that bhav so here inner consciousness inner most consciousness is what is enjoyed as rasa in abhinav bhut right so you can see that these are the different four positions which have been experienced or which have been put out well we have had a lot of uh discussion on this there are several other positions taken by later acharyas some have amended some have and i don't want to go into that for those of you who are deeply into this issue of what exactly is rasa and how it is created you can read in english a translation of the original work called ras siddhant by dr nagendra he was a professor of delhi university to my mind it is the best collection of a best review of all the positions uh, of the different acharyas right from bharat muni to pandit jagannath and even later right huh the uh, the name ras siddhant it's a, it's it's in hindi by dr nagendra uh, dr nagend it's a very famous work published about 30 35 years ago originally in hindi but it has been translated into english and it has been translated even into sanskrit <laughs> but it's it's not a very popular work but it is a scholar's uh, book wonderful if at some time later on when you have finished your courses here and when you want to go into a deeper study of what is rasa then this is one book which you can read all right so we have come to the point where going on and on about rasa would make rasa itself rasahin <laughs> and so let us graduate to the next chapter of the natya shastra where do we go from ras siddhant in the scheme of the 36 chapters in the natya shastra the 8th 9th and 10th chapters they turn towards something very practical again you see the fourth and the fifth chapter were preoccupied with angika abhinay the fifth chapter is uh, uh, ranga or or the no the purva ranga as well as the creation of the uh, theater house but uh, the fourth chapter was is specifically about the seventh chapter from which we read uh yesterday 